Who wants a new gaming PC? Chances are you, because you're watching this video where we're going to go through the very best gaming PC parts that you can get hold of right now, and we'll be doing a budget build, a mid-range, and of course a high-performance behemoth to show you exactly what you can get for your money right now. As always, these will be very closely inspired by the real-life builds that we've been doing on the channel, including this one that looks absolutely beautiful, alongside the full, unedited live builds that you can find in the playlist linked down below. But today is all about parts, so let's see what we can find after a short word from this video's sponsor. Gigabyte's M32U is the 4K gaming monitor you've been waiting for. With full Ultra HD resolution and a 32-inch form factor, you can immerse yourself in proper next-gen gaming with image quality that will blow you away. It's 144Hz for super smooth gameplay, comes with a KVM switch for multiple device setups, and it's rated for up to 90% of the DCI P3 color space. Learn more today with the link down below. Okay. Let us begin. And we will of course start at the budget end. And I'm going to begin this by actually looking on Overclockers UK and we're going to go for graphics cards first. In particular, by looking at AMD, because we've literally just made a video all about performance per dollar or performance per pound. And it seems that at the moment, AMD pretty much has a stranglehold on the best value, mainly because their cards have dropped in price the most. And this is a little bit of a red herring here, because this is the RX 6500 XT. And this is a card I just don't recommend on the channel because when we tested it, the performance is so much worse compared to the slightly more expensive cards and you don't actually have an encoder to share your gameplay and it seems as if it's an option but not really one most people should be looking for. If you want to go for this sort of price you're going to have to look used. Under the £200 mark something like a GTX 1070 or 1080 if you can find it it's not a bad bet but we're focusing on new here today and the RX 6600 Dual here seems to be a very good option. I mean, £260 definitely isn't cheap for a graphics card. Where are the ones for 100 It seems as if this is just not going to change. But still, this is a card that we really do recommend. And if you want to see all of the benchmarks for this and all the other GPUs we'll be talking about today, you can find this video in the top round corner of your screen. Amazingly, look, you also get a free copy of The Last of Us Part 1, a game that came out, what, like 15 years ago on PS3? It's good that PC got it eventually, though. Something that might be a little bit more tricky is actually the choice of CPU because you've got AMD and Intel and AMD at the moment is clearly going to be the best for longevity because the brand new platform from AM5 is just going to last a lot longer. There'll be more future upgrades you can do. But at the budget end, I usually prefer to go for Intel because even though there won't be newer CPUs coming out that you can upgrade to, you can always sell your current one and then upgrade to like an i5, i7 or i9 CPU if you want. So to say that upgrade paths aren't available isn't actually strictly true, especially if you're looking at getting used prices. These are the brand new ones, Raptor Lake, but as you can see, they're all very, very expensive. So instead, we're gonna look at the previous gen, Alder Lake, and something like an i5-12400F is probably the way I would recommend going. If you do wanna save as much money as possible, then this i3 actually isn't a bad option. It is only quad core, which is gonna be the main problem with it. But if you are looking to upgrade, as I say, at a future date, maybe have this for like six months and then grab something else from the used market, this is not a bad option, just be aware that there are gonna be some limitations. Again, let's have a look on Google Shopping just to see if we can get this for less, because I imagine we can. Yeah, CCL, I've got this for 155. Of course, we're also going to need a motherboard for this, and we're going to look for one that has DDR4 memory just to save ourselves as much as possible. We could save ourselves loads of money and go for this 660M from Gigabyte, or even more with this H610M from ASUS. But personally, if you are looking at this sort of level, I would advise getting not the base level, but maybe one up from that, just because you tend to get better cooling for the CPU on the VRMs. But then also a few more features and the board doesn't feel like it costs about 50 pence. So taking that all into account, we've got this tough board that's for 200, that's a little bit more then I think we want to spend here. There is a 660M Bazooka for 150, but actually I think our best option is this Asus Prime 660 Plus. It doesn't come with Wi-Fi, so take this into account, get a different one if you need that. But I think for today, this is probably going to be our best option. Of course, we're also going to need some DDR4 memory. I would recommend going for 3600 megahertz if you can. I use this little price filter to find ourselves something in the sort of 60 pound region. Getting RGB does add more money, but actually there is this kit of Lexar Hades here for around about £50. And Lexar are quite new, I think, to PC gaming components, but I have actually used this. They sent it out for some sponsored stuff. Spuff. 
They sent this out for some sponsored stuff a couple of years ago, and I was using it in my what's then personal rig actually for quite a while, had no issues with it. So I think for 50 pounds, that is actually a steal. Now, when it comes to cases, this is always gonna be an area of personal preference, but because we've gone for a full-size ATX motherboard, of course we need a full-size ATX chassis, and we're usually looking for around about the 50 pounds or so mark. I do like that you've actually got this 30 series and 40 series compatible cases on overclockers. That's quite a nice touch, because if you go for like a really high-end one, they're massive, but at the budget end, it's not really a big deal but obviously it will still need to fit everything in. How about the MagForge 100M? We built this on the channel. You can find this video in the top right corner of your screen. This is on pre-order, so I know we're cheating a little bit, but this is actually one of my favorite all-time budget cases. And if there's ever an opportunity to use it on the channel, we're gonna do just that. We will, of course, also need some SSD storage. We're gonna look for PCI3 here to save ourselves some money, unless there are some absolutely killer deals. Let's look at the one terabyte options. Here we've got a 970 Evo Plus for 100 pounds. But part of me thinks we can probably do better than that. Yeah, look, here we go. 100 pounds for a SN850X. Or if you do want to save money, you've got this one for 62.99, Crucial P3, or the P3 Plus. Or look, you've got the Crucial P5P for 90 pounds. I think this is going to be the best option. Let's go with this. Look at those read write speeds, 6,600 and 5,000 for 90 pounds. Now you probably noticed that we haven't actually spec'd up a cooler yet and don't raise your pitchforks when I say this, but what I'd probably recommend if you're trying to save as much money as possible is to actually use the stock one that comes in the box. And the problem with this is that if you're using this as like a normal computer, it's sitting on your desk, it does make a little bit more noise than we'd like. However, if you're trying to, I guess, save as much money as possible and an extra 40 pounds is a lot, then just get a better cooler later, use the free one that comes in the box for now and just make do with the noise for a month or so. Because it's not like it's crazy, it's just if you buy something like a Hyper 212 or anything that's small and will be able to cool the i5 that little bit better, you'll find that the noise levels are just much, much lower and if you're annoyed by that, then it's gonna get rid of the problem. Or if you're using a gaming headset all the time anyway, well, it just doesn't really matter because that chip's not gonna use loads of power. But I think that leaves us with just one final component, which is of course the power supply. And we don't need anything crazy here at all. Up to 800 watts is definitely gonna be more than sufficient. This one from Seasonic. It's not modular, but it's gold rated. I would always prefer a modular power supply because all of these cables can get quite ugly. However, it is actually a bit of a catch-22 I don't know, what's the opposite of a catch-22? Catch-11? Because if you go for a lower powered power supply, there are less cables on it anyway, so you don't need to not use them. So it's not actually as important uh, if you go for a more entry-level power supply, if you like. And something like this is gonna be quite reliable. So unless you can find like a better modular option that's also from a reputable brand, I think we're gonna go with the Seasonic. And that brings us to a grand total of 800 and 42 pounds and 10 pence, which actually is probably a little bit more than I'd usually spec for a budget-friendly gaming PC. I mean, that word doesn't actually mean anything. I mean, what's your budget? That's the question. So there's definitely ways to save money. The best way really to do that would be to look at a used graphics card. You can probably knock 100 pounds off that. The case, you could maybe save an extra 10, 20 pounds, but it's not really what I'd recommend. SSD, you could definitely go for 500 gigabytes. That would save you 50 quid or so if you went for a more entry-level one. There's definitely quite a few things you can do, but especially with the CPU, you, you can look to get an i3 or just go for a used motherboard, used CPU, and then again, you can save more money. So once you put all of those things together, it does start to shave, I guess, a fair bit of money off. But if you want loads of performance now, that's gonna be perfect for 1080p, high refresh rate gaming, or maybe a bit of 1440p 60, then this is gonna be a brilliant little rig. But what if you wanna spend even more than this? Maybe around about a thousand, 1,500 pounds? Well, we better take a look. And for this one, we're going to use scan computers. And again, I would always recommend starting with the GPU. And I want to see the difference between AMD and Nvidia here, because in terms of value, something like the 6700 XT is actually a very good option at the moment. It's still a very expensive graphics card, but you're definitely getting a fair bit more performance than you would do with the 6600. Just want to see the difference really between the 6750 and the 6700. We go low to high, 410. 440, so actually this Sapphire one looks to be a decent enough option. My favorite GPU, even now, is still the 3060 Ti because the performance on this thing is pretty insane. And bang, there we go. Team Green with the better value here today. Obviously, it depends on when you're actually doing your checking out, when you're sort of looking at different websites and the best deals available. 
but £389 is not too shabby for a 3060 Ti, and it of course gives you features like DLSS and better ray tracing. So let's go with this. Today only deal, £389.99. Now, when it comes to the CPU or the platform, this is where things do get very interesting, because I've been recommending Intel i5s for years, and I still do, they're excellent. But at this time, I think that AM5 does make a lot of sense because as long as you get a decent value CPU to go with it and you buy a motherboard that's not crazy expensive, then I do now think that that longevity is worth the extra money because you can completely transform your rig from something that's brilliant today but not quite so good in like four or five years time into something that, well, you can upgrade in four or five years time and get something that is super up to date. So we're going to look at AMD today. It will be a Ryzen 5 because we don't need to do anything crazy. And this is exactly what we've been looking for, the AMD Ryzen 5 7600. For gaming, this thing is a champ. It's only six cores. So if you are going to do like some game streaming or run loads of programs all at the same time, so whilst actually playing your games, step up to something like a Ryzen 7 or an Intel i7. But I do think that for £230, this is an absolute steal. And it does unlock all of that upgradability whilst giving you fantastic gaming performance today. So let's add this to our basket and then look at AMD AM5 motherboards. We want ATX B650. And what have we got? Well, we've got the Tough Gaming B650 plus Wi-Fi for 240. I'm a big fan of Tough motherboards and they do actually have this one here for 220 if you don't need Wi-Fi. But is there anything else? Not really. They tend to be going up in price quite a lot. So let's assume that we don't need Wi-Fi and let's go for the 650 plus. We are also going to need some memory for this, and the good thing is that this supports DDR5, so you've got even faster memory. The bad side is that it is very expensive. Let's have a look what we can actually get hold of, though. I really want 32 gigabytes or 16, but it doesn't actually look like you get that option. I know there are kits, they do exist, where you can get 16 gigabytes. Let's have a look on eBuy. Do they sell it? Yes, yes they do. You see? It exists. 80 pounds. Okay, looks like we're getting this from eBuyer then, 77.99, because 16 gigabytes is all you need. Let's have a look at the storage options that we have at Scan. We're definitely going to go for PCI Gen 4, and again, I'm sure there'll be plenty of offers. Like this one from Western Digital, the SN770, 70 pounds, that's a pretty good option for our budget rig actually. But what if we want to go for something a little bit faster? But I actually want to go for pretty much the fastest of the fast. The Seagate FireQ to 530. Big fan of this. Used it loads. £101. Let's go for that. And then comes again what's going to be a little bit more of a tricky option. The case. Because here you can spend a lot of money. You can run away. You can add loads of fans. And suddenly your mid-range or high-end PC turns from affordable to something crazy. Especially once you start adding in RGB fans. Honestly, it gets ludicrous. So I'm going to, I guess, look for about 100-ish pounds. 4000D, use this loads of times on the channel, but you will have to add your own fans to make this look a little bit more pretty. 5000D is good, but it's just a little bit unnecessarily big, to be honest, for what we need here today. There's this one from Antic, though. AX90 does come with RGB fans as standard. Looks pretty solid. Haven't used it, so always cautious to recommend, but it does actually come with an RGB controller, which is something on a case like this that makes a massive difference because you don't have loads of cables like flailing everywhere and trying to daisy chain them. So I think we're going to take a risk and we're going to go with this, but like all of the components here today, I obviously haven't put these rigs together. This is an ideas list. Until I built them, we can never be 100% sure on compatibility. We can be like 99% though. Then we need to go for a cooler and I'm going to go for an all-in-one because let's be honest, they just look better. And especially if you move your PC a lot, it's just just a bit safer, I suppose. Nothing crazy, though, because we've not got a particularly high-end CPU that consumes, like, crazy power. <coughs> Intel. I mean, what about one from Antec? It would match. Again, I haven't actually used this one. That's the only thing. But it is going to sync together better. And that is quite a cool little design, actually. Is it definitely compatible with AM5? That's the only thing. It's on the list. I guess we just have to trust them. Once again, we're also going to need a power supply. I'm going to look at about a 750 watt option, I think, for this. Probably about right. Thermal take always do some very good value ones. But honestly, I think this one at the top is probably what I would go for, the RM750X. I've used a... I don't know if it was a 750X, but I've used one of these before in a different power wattage anyway. They're very compatible. You can get loads of custom cables that work with Corsair if you want to make it look a little bit better. They tend to be very reliable, and 750 watts is more than we really need. So again, let's add this to our basket. 
we get our magic calculator out so we can do our mathematics. 1, 2, 1, 3, 40 plus our RAM brings us to a total of £1,291, which I think most people would be really happy with what they're going to get for that. The price of PC gaming in the last few years has come down massively. It's still a lot, but the fact that you can get all of these components I think is fantastic. And this is going to give you loads of performance no matter the resolution you want to play at. Like, it's not really a 4K card, but in certain games like Forza 4, I remember that actually running really well. Was it over 100 frames a second? I don't know, but point being, I think this is going to be a pretty kick-ass system, actually, and should suit anyone, really, that wants to spend a decent amount and get loads of performance to boot. Oh, but you know what? What if you want even more performance? What if you say, you know what? I've had enough of saving my money. It's time to spend it. Let's get the best gaming rig possible. And believe it or not, I'm going to start with something a little bit strange by recommending the 7700X. And then I'm going to immediately recommend that you don't buy that. You instead get the 7800X 3D. But at the time of filming, that's not actually live on UEG yet because it's like, what, two or three weeks until it comes out. So depending on when you're watching this, if you need the PC right now, then this is going to be a sort of equivalent but maybe not quite as powerful whereas if you can wait and you can upgrade to the 3d version then some games like harry potter or hogwarts legacy actually see a massive improvement and it's going to vary from game to game but essentially if you want to go ryzen then the fastest gaming cpus have the 3db cache and the 12 core version i'm the way it's sort of set up, only six of the cores actually have the full effect of the 3D V-Cache, whereas if you go for the even higher end, 7950X 3D, then that is just like too expensive really for gamers. So there are three options, it depends what you need, but I think the 7800X 3D is probably the one I would go for myself. Of course, if you want to save yourself some money, this is also a fantastic option, but we use this as our little placeholder today by adding it to the basket. Then we're going to have a look at some motherboards. We've got the Strix Gaming E or the Strix Gaming EF. So let's go with this. We will, of course, need some DDR5 memory. We will go for 32 gigabytes of the stuff this time because let's be honest, it does make more sense at the high end. Here we've got G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB, but fundamentally it is an expo kit 32 gigabytes running at DDR5 6000. So let's add this to our basket. Now let's get a little bit controversial because it is time to talk graphics and obviously you're either team red or team green or if you're very specifically after 1440p gaming, maybe team Intel, team blue. But again, just like all of the other rigs, it is gonna depend on when you actually do your shopping and when you are actually buying your GPU because pricing changes all of the time. I've selected all of the new cards here so you can get an idea of what sort of prices we're looking at. And the 4070 Ti, despite the fact that it's been well kind of slated by reviewers i honestly still do like it and recommend it i wish it wasn't expensive as it is but unless you need more performance like there's not really that much point in going for it i'd actually rather go for an xtx if the pricing was decent but they tend to be a lot more than the asking price should be at the moment, which is a little bit limiting. All like the cheapest one is actually a thousand dollars. And I'll be honest, I wasn't actually expecting that. The stock of this thing has been not great. So it is good to see it back, but it is definitely in stock. A thousand dollars, it's a lot of money, but if you're looking at building a high-end rig and you don't specifically need DLSS 3.0 or the absolute best ray tracing, then at the high end, this offers not great value, but I guess the best value when you compare it to some of its competitors. So let's add the XDX to our shopping list. Let's have a look at our case options. Fractal Torrent. This was nice, but as you can see, it is quite expensive and the cable management out the back, genuinely, I, I wasn't really happy with that. So unless you really like the design, I'd probably go for something else. We've got the Meshify 2 Compact. What about the full-size Meshify 2? This is quite a long case, but obviously that means it is actually going to fit long graphics cards in, which is good. And I have actually built in a Meshify 2 already. If you do want to see this build and see how it went, you can find that in the top round corner of your screen. But let's add this to our basket and then move on to cooling. And this time I do want to look for a 360, not necessarily because we absolutely need it, but because I want a silent PC. I want as much performance as we can possibly get. The problem is, all of these are just so expensive. It seems that if you want the absolute best value, you're pretty much looking at an MSI, because we've got this C360 for $119, or we've got the Core Liquid 360R V2 for 120. I must admit, I haven't used this exact one myself, but I did use a V1, and while it wasn't quite as good as some of the top-end competition, I think for the price, this is gonna be worth a punt. So let's go with this. Let's have a look at our storage options. Again, Gen 4 as fast as we can go. 
Oh, but what about this one? $150, two terabytes of storage, and ridiculously fast. Okay, let's go for this one. Which I think leaves us with just one final component, which is the power supply. And ideally, I'm gonna look for a thousand watts just to make sure. RM1000X, $190. EVGA, Supernova, $173. There's an option here from Gigabyte, that's $140. But I think we're gonna go with this one from EVGA. Add this to our basket. And that, I do believe, is it. Are you ready for the grand total? We have $2,406. 62 cents. I do believe there's probably some extra local taxes or however that works in the US. I'm, I'm British. I, I don't do that, okay? Actually, that's not too shabby because usually in these sorts of rigs, we go ridiculously high end. We add everything we possibly can. But the thing is, this is still keeping it quite sensible. I think the price will increase ever so slightly when you go for that 3D CPU. But otherwise, you pretty much do have the best of the best. Certainly when it comes to AMD, it's only really going to be a 4090 upgrade that will make a massive difference to your gameplay. You've got something that will look fantastic it will run games brilliantly it's only really dlss3 and ray tracing that is going to be better on the nvidia side of things unless you go for that 4090 so all in all i think these are some brilliant options i know that we could go a little bit cheaper and if you do want to see a video where we do you can find that in the top round corner but let me know your thoughts on this what have i got right what have i got wrong what would you go for yourself smash the like button if you've enjoyed this get yourself subscribed and as always if you do want to check out current pricing on anything featured in this video you can find my amazon affiliate links listed down below and while you're down there, why not discover Gigabyte's M32U gaming monitor? Thanks to a super smooth 4K panel, this monitor is perfect for both PC and console gaming, with HDMI 2.1 allowing for 120Hz Ultra HD gaming on both Series X and PlayStation 5. It's also rated for FreeSync Premium Pro variable refresh rates, which reduces the stutter and tearing that you'd otherwise get in game. Grab yours today with the link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video, I'll catch you in the next one.